Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, HPV, or human papillomavirus, is the single biggest cause of cervical cancer in the U.S., but it's also a common cause of cancer of the mouth and the throat. Now, the pap smear, along with a test for HPV, which can be done at the same time as the pap smear, both of those have reduced the number of cases of cervical cancer, but rates of oral cancer, cancers of the mouth and throat, are growing. In an effort to change that, Mayo Clinic Cancer Center joined 69 other National Cancer Institute centers in calling for increased HPV vaccination and screening to eliminate HPV-related cancers. Here to discuss is Mayo Clinic otolaryngologist, that's ear, nose, and throat specialist, and head and neck surgeon, Dr. Eric Moore. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Moore. Thank you for having me on, Trace. Dr. Moore, good to, good to have you on the program, especially to talk about HPV, because it is ubiquitous. I mean, it's, it's almost everywhere, and some have said that it's as common a virus as the one that causes the common cold. Yes, that's right. So uh, almost everybody who's alive and out in the world in the United States gets exposed to some form of HPV at some point in their lifetime. And they may never know it. They may not have a lot of symptoms from it. They may clear it. They may get something like a wart or papilloma. Or in the very un most unfortunate cases, it may be one of the high-risk HPV types that actually can cause cancer. Unlike a cold, though, this is a virus that can cause cancer. Right. So there are certain strains of the HPV virus. There are uh, over 100 strains of the HPV virus that we call high-risk type HPV virus. And those have actually been uh, discovered as cancer-causing types of viruses. And the one that we hear about the most, of course, is cancer of the cervix. But uh, we also now know that it's a fairly common cause of cancer of the throat and the mouth. So uh, how did that all happen? So... Uh, Many years ago, we were seeing some patients with throat cancer, and throat is sort of a, a generic term, and the specific area of the throat is the tonsils on the sides of the throat or the tonsil tissue on the back of the uh, tongue. People would develop cancers in this area, and they wouldn't behave like the typical patient. They wouldn't look like the typical patient that we think of as a throat cancer patient. And by that, I mean many throat cancers are the result of, of chronic long-term tobacco and alcohol exposure. But we would see some patients who didn't have a long history of tobacco and alcohol exposure develop the same cancer of their tonsil or tongue. And surprisingly, those patients would behave, their cancer would behave in a much more agreeable fashion to treatment. They would have a much higher survival with the same treatment that we were giving to all patients with tonsil and tongue-based cancer. And eventually, as we delved into that cancer more did more studies on the biopsy specimens, looked into the patients more, it was found that those patients had a very similar cancer in cell type to cervical cancer, mm -hmm. and eventually it's discovered that those cancers also were mediated by papillomavirus. I guess you probably should tell us how you think they got these cancers. Yeah, so, so papillomavirus is a sexually transmitted disease, and orogenital sexual contact is the proposed mode of transmission of human papillomavirus in the throat. Both men and women get this? Correct. But more men than women? More or? men than women. And do we know why? Probably because of, um, probably because of sexual practices and um, probably because of chronic infections in the cervix and then oral sexual contact with that leads to transmission to the throat. So the number of HPV-related cancers of the throat mouth the, uh, are on the rise. Is that correct? Yeah, or is that, that just being more, is it being discovered more? Right. So great question. So when you have, when you see a cancer that's increasing in incidence, is it because now we know where to look for it? Mm -hmm. Now we know what to test or is it actually changing in incidence? But that question has been pretty definitively answered. This cancer is actually on the rise. That's an unusual thing with cancer. Most of the cancers that we treat are now on the decline because of better preventative health and better awareness of things that cause cancer. But this cancer is one of the few cancers that we still that we see in the human body that's increasing in incidence every year. So Five years ago, 12 to 13,000 people in the United States had HPV-related oropharynx cancer. This year, 20,000 people in the United States have HPV-related oropharynx cancer. It's estimated to continue to rise throughout the next decade. 
Is it because the virus has changed or because our immunity has changed? We, th the leading theory, uh, and these are just theories, mm -hmm. it's very hard to go back and say what happened 10, 15, 20 years ago that led to this. We think it was because of some changes in sexual practices. It's possible that the virus really? has become more virulent, the virus has transformed, the virus has become more aggressive at, at, at forming cancers. We don't think anything in the detection has really changed all that much. It's thought to be a downstream effect of maybe changes in sexual practices that happened 20, 30 years ago or more. Wow. Can you tell uh, when you biopsy one of these cancers that it is caused by HPV? We can. So there, there are both very in-depth tests and also some very quick tests that can be done uh, that can determine the relationship to HPV. And right now, when we see a tonsil or tongue-based cancer, we immediately have the pathologist stain it with a particular stain that gives us a, a very, very good idea that it's related to HPV. And the reason we do that is because the treatments have actually become different for HPV-related cancers. They behave so much better to a lot of the treatment that we give that it's important for us to know, and it's included in the staging system. We classify the cancer of whether it's HPV-related or not. And what is the usual treatment? The usual treatment is some combination of removal of the tissue and radiation therapy or radiation therapy and chemotherapy. And this is another, this is another interesting thing about this particular cancer. We started to realize that these tumors, uh, I'll back up a little bit, the, the typical head and neck cancer, squamous cell carcinoma, that's not HPV related, we throw all the treatments we have at it, and still the treatment success rate and cure rate is less than 60% for really? many of these cancers. But people with HPV-related cancer, we throw the treatments that we have for it, and their cure rate is upwards of 90 to 95%. So we're also not only in the era of detecting the tumor and making some suggestions on the treatment, we're in the era of changing the treatment for it, and we're trying to de-intensify the treatment. A lot it of cancer treatment is tough, and so we're trying to sort of curtail some of our treatment to decrease the long-term side effects because it behaves better. Is surgery always part of the treatment regimen? Uh, no. And so um, the tumor responds well to radiation therapy and chemotherapy. It responds well to surgical therapy with or without radiation therapy, depending on the stage. And so we're still uh, actually doing trials to try to figure out what is the best treatment and what gives people the fewest side effects but still has a high cure rate. Right now, here, we do a lot of surgical therapy to remove the tumor from the tonsil and remove some of the lymph nodes because we found that we can decrease quite a bit the radiotherapy that we give after that the and still achieve yeah. a high cure mm -hmm. rate and so that's our typical treatment for it right now all right i guess the big issue the, the one thing we want to talk about be sure we talk about is how to prevent this because even though the cure rate is very good it's something you don't want to get and there is a way to prevent it well yes. there are several ways to prevent it Th there's several ways to prevent it and and so it's a sexually transmitted disease and so so people think well abstinence careful sexual practices will play a role but that's a lot harder to control and it's a lot harder to control for anybody but yourself and so the 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 best treatment we think is we have a vaccine for this virus that's very effective and if you can vaccinate against the virus effectively then you shouldn't develop the long-term infection and then you actually have a vaccination that works against a cancer which is very unique so we recommend that people receive the vaccine before they've been exposed to the virus so fairly early in life before before they have any chance of being exposed to a sexually transmitted disease and then hopefully protect themselves lifelong, not only from throat cancer related to HPV, cervical cancer related to HPV, there are other cancers related to HPV, and uh, the virus protects against the high-risk strains of HPV. So if you're a parent out there, you really ought to have your child vaccinated because as Dr. Bob Jacobson, the pediatrician, has told us before, it's not just a vaccine against HPV, it's a cancer vaccine, right. and it can, and can prevent it. Right. Dr. Eric Moore, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, I appreciate being on the show. Thank you. We've been talking about HPV-related mouth and throat cancer with a Mayo Clinic expert, head and neck surgeon, Dr. Eric Moore. Thanks again. Thank you.